Let's have a look at these questions then. Um, so remember the idea again? Have a go at the questions. Um, and then you can look through this to uh, to find the solutions. Okay. So on the first question, it says copy and complete the table on the right. So first of all, y is directly proportional to x, and then it's changed the rule. So basically, that's two questions, isn't it? Okay. So I've copied the table out twice. There we go. Um, so let's first of all go with the direct proportion. So that's this one. So y is directly proportional to x. So what does that mean? So y equals k times something. So we look at the pairing that we've actually got. So we just substitute that in. So 8 equals k times 3. So 8 divided by 3. So k must equal 8 over 3. So k equals 8 over 3. So y equals 8 over 3 x. Not a very nice number, but never mind. Right, so next bit that we're going to do, let's work out the other things. Okay, so all this means is 8 over 3 multiplied by 2. So that's going to be 16 over 3. I, I'm just going to leave it like that. That's fine. Then this one is going to be 8 over 3 multiplied by 9. Okay, so 9 times 8. Oh, wait a minute. I know what this is going to be. All right, there we go. So let's go 9 times 8. I'm just going to show you, okay? Because see the 9 and then the 3? See if you can tell me what the answer is. 24. There you go. 24. Going backwards. So this one, and I'll squeeze it in up here. So 100 equals 8 over 3x. So this time, to get the x bit, I don't want that to be there, so I've got to do 100 divided by 8 over 3. So 100 divide 8 over 3. So we can multiply by 3 over 8. Give me the same answer. 75 over 2 in short. So 75 over 2, or if you want it as a decimal, we have 37.5. Okay, I'll tell you what, let me just put that in there next to it. All right. And then part two. Part two was y is inversely proportional to x. So y is like this. And so it's inversely proportional. So y equals k over x. So everything is exactly the same. I need to work out what the k thing actually is. So 8 equals k over 3. Multiplied by the 3, so k must be, whoops, equal to 24. So y equals 24 over x. 24 divided by 2. 24 divided by 9. So let's just swap 24 over 9, okay? That'd be nicer. Um, can use this. I've just realised that 3 goes into it, so it will cancel down. But let's have 24 over 9. There you go. Look, it's going to be 8. It's the same as 8 over 3. Yeah. So that would probably be a better answer. Okay. If you want to write it as a decimal, it's 2.6 reoccurring or 2.67 if you want two decimal places. Okay. And what about the last one? So if we add 100 equal 24 over x would be effectively just like you multiply by the x divided by the 100 so it's 24 over 100 24 divided by 100 is 0.24 all right there we go right then let's have a look at a, a couple more from these so oh part b part b on here it said explain in words the main difference between direct and indi uh, indirect proportion. Inverse, indirect. So, direct proportion as x increases 
y increases. It's probably the easiest way we can put it. Inverse proportion or indirect proportion as x increases, y decreases. There you go. Right. Question two. Ooh, look, I've already put some information down there. Right. So question two. We've got uh, P is inversely proportional to the cube of G. Right, so I've put that down and I've also written down, so we've kind of sort of started the, the equation and I've given the information. So what we need to do here is we need to work out what the K bit is. So let's just fill the information in. So we've got 10 equals K over 1.5 cubed. So it just be 10 multiplied by 1.5 cubed okay because that's going to come up there so 1.5 cubed multiply 10 there we go Ugh, 135 over 4 um, so k k equals 135 over 4 if you really want it as a decimal and we got 33 point seven five okay might find that maybe a little bit easier to work with um, and then the next part if we look at the question it said a find p when g is equal to 2.1 okay so if we know that g is 2.1 remember one thing that I've not done yet so I've not rewritten this let's do this p equals 33.75 um, over g cubed. So part a when g is 2.1 so that would be 33.75 over 2.1 cubed and if you just plug that into your calculator um, I think we end up with 3.644 and then on part b that's going to be, so this time on part B, it says find G when P is equal to 15. So let's just pop that in. So 15 equals 33.75 over G cubed. So slightly, slightly trickier to do, a little bit more work here. Remember, multiply by G cubed, divide by 15. Okay, so G cubed equals... 33.75 over 15 and then we're going to end up cube rooting this answer here so 33.75 divide 15 okay that gives me uh, gives me 9 over 4 and so g cubed equals 9 over 4 so g must equal the cube root of 9 over 4 so we can do that nice and quickly on here. Let's just do that just brings up the previous answer. Okay, and so G is going to equal one point three one. Okay, if you just go to two decimal places there. Right, let's have a look at number three. So B varies directly as a square root of D. Okay, and it's giving me a link. Find something out. Okay, standard question. So let's have a look at the information, right? So I've just summarized what we've got. Okay, there we go. Take this, pop it in here. So five equals. So remember the objective is to try and find the constant of proportionality. So here we go. And then what we're going to do is we need to do five divided by the square root of 2.2 to get k. That's not going to be very nice, is it? Uh, 5 divide square root. There we go. It's a uh, yuck. 3.37. I'm, I'm, I'm going to round that off. Okay. Equals 3.37. If you spotted something that I might just have missed there that maybe I should include. Okay. Just something to, to think about there, okay? Um, and then the last bit of the question, it says find B when D is equal to 
0.5. Okay, so d is equal to 0 0.5. So let's just rewrite this thing here. So b equals, so we've got plus minus 3.37 square root of d. And it tells me that d is 0 0.5. So b equals, so I can add the 3.37, I'm going to multiply by the square root of 0 0.5. We can argue about the signs though, okay? I'm not going to worry too much about that, all right? Okay, so let's not worry about that for the moment. At the end of the day, it's going to be, be a plus minus there. So 3.37 multiplied by the square root of 0 0.5 is going to be 2.38. So B equals 2.38. Um, and there we go. We, we can, like I said, I'm not, I don't want to get too much into that uh, plus minus there because that question would have to make that a little bit clearer for us, okay? Um, so question four, okay? Now on question four, question four is interesting because there's loads of stuff on question four, but actually it's really simple, all right? Um, and it says a person's reach uh, with an upstretched arm is roughly proportional to their height. Their reach, proportional to the height. So therefore the reach equals constant proportionality times the height. In the next statement, it then says, on average, statistics show that a person can reach 1.3 times the height. That's the constant of proportionality. So the reach equals 1.3 times the height. So we've done that. Write down both a proportionality statement and an equation for the situation. Right, we've done that. Would you expect a person of height 1.75 meters to be able to touch the ceiling 2.5 meters high? Well, let's just try that. There's a height. So the reach would be 1.3 multiplied by 1.75. What does that end up? What would that give us? 1.3 times 1. Point, what was it? 75 equals, there you go, 2.275, 2.275 meters. Right. Hi. Uh, no, I don't think they would reach that high, would they? Okay. So we think they're going to reach about that high. So the answer to the question, do I think they're going to actually reach that high? No. I think they can get to, let's say they can get to around 2 point, so I'm going to round this to two decimals, okay, 2.28 meters, which is a fair bit short, okay, if it had been like 2.48, then I, I might have argued a point, okay, we might have said, because, you know, that 1.3 is, is a rough figure, but I think that's too far out, all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put questions uh, five, six, and seven. I'll put those in a separate clip for you, okay? Because otherwise, this this one would be a little bit too long for you, okay? There you go.